screen that I'm sharing with everybody? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just thought, you know, I'd start us off just kind of taking a look at this is uh, just uh, area 21 and it's across all price points and all property types. So single family residential and condo townhome. But I was um, a little surprised actually uh, to see that um, inventory is up slightly um, there. Now that's probably if we were to separate out the single family detached from the condo townhome, I bet that's where that's probably gonna be driving some of that. And we'll find out here in a moment. But uh, as you can see here, looking at this section, the center section where it's a current month versus the same month a year ago, we're about 8.3% ahead in total inventory. Again, we'll take a look at single family detached and the attached just to kind of get an idea. Um, but then again, as um, we're all knowing that our pipelines from uh, August certainly fueled a very robust September for all of us. And that's reflected there in the 12.2% increase in the total number of sales. Um, and we're uh, still continuing that very positive pending trend into September, which is gonna result in October and November closings. And we're up 41% over the same time period um, compared. So uh, August, uh, September was a little slower than August, but I would expect that we might even see that balance out because these numbers are hot off the press. Um, literally September numbers were released today. I looked over the weekend and they still weren't showing. So I think because Monday is the first day of the business week this week, we're seeing these numbers, but as the, as the late, um, oncomers or the late closings come in, we might even see that pended or as the contracts rather come in, we might see those pended numbers improve. So, and then if we scroll down and take a look at, um, the nice thing too I like about this is we can kind of get a snapshot of what's going on over the first 11 days from uh, September to October. And uh, as you can kind of see there, uh, again, the inventory is a little bit up. So, um, but let's just out of curiosity sake, let's go ahead and, just look for single family residents. You kind of remember these numbers and we won't do it by price point again, but we can jump into that and I can jump into anything that you guys want to jump into in a moment. I'll let somebody shout out something specific they want to take a look at, but let's just kind of see what's going on when we take out the condo and detached in uh, area 21 and see what that looks like. And as I suspected, that uh, condo townhome inventory is what was skewing our um, available inventory for sale, going back to what Shay kind of started us off with, with the limited supply, especially the single family uh, property type and a lower price point. We can even look and see, we can kind of take a look at by a price point in a moment. But as you can see here, the year over year difference is we're down about 9% in uh, homes available for sale across all price points in the Buckhead area, area 21. And um, for even the same time period uh, in October for the first 11 days, October this year to last year, down 6.6%. Uh, you can see too that we have sold uh, about 20% more homes uh, September this year versus last year. And uh, the pendings again are up in indicating that we're gonna continue to have strong closings month in October and probably leading into November. Um, things are a little bit slower in October compared to September, but you gotta keep in mind, we just you know blew September out of the water. So again, I wouldn't put a lot of uh, credence or fear into what we're seeing here in terms of the month over month change for the first 11 days. Certainly something we'll keep an eye on as the month goes on. And then if we were to just look and see, and the reason I like uh, using trend graphics to kind of just get a snapshot of what's going on in the market, which is something all of you have access to through trend graphics. If you don't know how to access it, it uh, can be found in my H&R office under the industry stats section. And you guys basically have this same kind of detail and information 
that we're taking a look at here. And uh, as we're seeing here, our month's supply of inventory in Area 21, all price points for the month of September was 3.7 months. Compare that to the previous same month time period a year ago of 4.9 probably was still a seller's market, it was trending more towards a balanced market towards the end of last year, as you look here and see that we went from 4.9 to 5.4. And then uh, certainly post COVID, uh, you can kind of see the impacts of that here in April and May, where we got up to a 6.8 month, we're trending back down to very much uh, more of a seller's market. It would even become more and more of a seller's market if we, I bet we were dice, looked at prices below say 700,000. So again, this is a great place to come and just kind of get a quick uh, look at what's been going on in the market. And then you can kind of see here too, the absorption rate is about 27%. So a pretty good absorption rate um, for the area. And then you have other great statistics down here. But uh, so welcome everybody. We were kind of just taking a look at area 21. I am more than happy now to open it up to the floor here and uh, anybody who would like to kind of take a dive into any uh, information in particular to the Buckhead in town market. So does anybody have anything you can put it in the chat or you can take yourself off of uh, uh, mute and just Tell me what it is that you want to start digging into, and then I'm going to take some of that information and show you how you might want to translate that into uh, more informed conversations with sellers um, when you're going on listings appointments. So we got Mary here. I'm interested in, let me see that chat real quick. It was there and then it disappeared. Uh, on high rise condos in the Buckhead, Triangle, Peachtree, Paces Ferry in the 400 ish price range. All right, Mary, so we're just gonna look at, um, it's hard for me in trend graphics to, 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 to hone in quite that precise. We can kind of try and do it by zip code. Would that be yeah, 30305? Yeah. Okay, all right, so we'll look at 30305, we'll look at condos, and we'll look at the 400-ish price range. So why don't we look at just things between, say, 300 to 500? Would that suffice? Okay, I'm getting a thumbs up from Sherry. Can we go just a little bit higher, like maybe 650? Sure. Thank you. Okay, we'll look three to 30305 and we're going to do just condo all right so as the mice are doing the work behind the scenes here All right, let's just make sure I've got the right criteria. I've got 30305 up here. So this is what we're looking at right now. Um, inventory up substantially year over year by almost 50%. We have 80 units currently on the market, say in September versus 53 a year ago. Uh, same trend is continuing over the first 11 days in October compared to the same time frame, which you would expect. And um, our sales are down a little bit um, for the September to uh, from August to September, but actually they were up year over year. We had seven sales a year ago. We had 10 sales in the month of September and the pending was actually up on a year over year basis. So we're seeing some activity in that price point, 
uh, as you can look here again too, you can kind of see down in the actual um, table down here that we had 79 units uh, in September. Um, we had 28 units come on the market in the last month is what your new listing uh, criteria means here. So you can see that we've had a pretty sub steady supply of inventory coming on over the last three months. We had 25 new listings in July, 31 in August, and 28 in September, which is helping replenish when they're selling. Uh, but we've probably, you know, this probably doesn't come as a surprise to a lot of you. It's really probably more trending towards a buyer's market in the uh, condo, you know, in this price point, we've got about an eight month supply. We had 6.9 months from the previous months. That's a function of getting this inventory of 28 coming onto the market and only selling 10. Uh, so we're kind of, you know, adding on uh, right now to what was already out there on the market and we're absorbing about 12% of the market. So you can kind of translate that into for every 10 properties that um, are out there, we're absorbing about one a month. So a kind of a low absorption rate right now, which is what's driving this bunch of uh, inventory on the closed sales. Also being that we only pended seven uh, versus selling 10, uh, you see that the absorption, uh, the uh, month supply for um, pended is going up to 11.3. So I would expect that we're probably gonna see an increase in the month's supply going into October based on uh, the number of homes that went under contract in September. And then you can kind of see the average, the median prices down here. Um, I don't know what happened a year ago in September to drive that up so high to 535, but that's a little bit of an anomaly if you look over historically over time. And we've kind of been bouncing all over the place as far as median goes over the last several months. This past month, it was 393, which is an increase from 380, but um, it's pretty significant drop from 720. You'll tighten up those median sale prices when you tighten up your, uh, your price range. But since we're looking at three to 650, that's a pretty big range. So when you have these higher spikes, it probably just means that we sold more in the upper end than down on that lower end. Um, what I'd like to do though is let's, since we kind of have now a snapshot of what's been going on over the last couple of days or last couple of months, let's take a look and see what has been happening in terms of, you know, the inventory and price reductions and things of that nature. Let me get into FMLS here to matrix. And so we are going to look in area 21. We're going to look for town condos because that's what we're looking at. We're just going to keep our pricing the same because I just want to kind of do an apples to apples comparison. And we'll look in area 21. So right now, between 300 and 500, it's obviously lumping in. Let's see. We've got a lot more inventory than Trend Graphics is showing. Let's go back here and see. We did 30305, I think. I did 30, that's right. Thank you. I knew there was something wrong. Thanks for keeping me on task, Sherry. There we go, 78, so it matches up. So of those 78 current properties, let's just take a quick look and see, um, What's been going on with uh, price reductions? So since we've got more of a buyer's market um, than we've had in the past, let's see what's going on in terms of our pricing and what's going on with the active inventory. And then we'll take a look back and see what's been going on historically over the last 60 days and see if we can see any trends there. It's a nice little price increase there. Lots of reductions, it looks like. From original to list. Now that's why, it's, let's see, hold on. Didn't like my formula.
There we go. Okay, so the first thing, let's just kind of take a look at, and Emily, you want to be described for this and kind of write some of this down in case I can't remember specific data points. Sure. So right now, the average, thank you. The, right now, the average total days on market for everything that's currently on the market is 71.3 days. So let's remember that number because we're going to take a look and see what the average total days on market is for things that have sold in the last 60 days. Um, of those uh, homes, let's see, we've had, let's see, of the 78 uh, current properties on the market, we've got, what's that math, 35 that are currently overpriced, um, which is... Let me make sure I just do that right. Thirty-five divided by seventy-eight. Forty-four, forty-five percent of the market has had to have a price reduction uh, so far. So let's remember that too, Emily. Forty-five percent, and of the homes that have had to reduce their price, they have been on the market one hundred and ten days, roughly compared to those that haven't. And that would kind of make sense because typically you don't have things, you're typically gonna do your price reductions and 40 days on market for the homes that haven't reduced the price. Okay, so that's kind of a snapshot of our active inventory. If I were gonna be going on a listing appointment and competing in this price point, that would be something I think is relative to share with the seller of just kind of what's been going on in the market uh, and what we're gonna be competing against. Now let's look back at what's happened in the last 60 days and see if we can't identify some trends and see what's happening in this market. So we're gonna just look at closed over the last two months from today and we've got 17 matches. Um, I'm gonna expand that out because I want a little bit more uh, inventory. So we're gonna go to the last three months, 90 days. And we've got 27 properties that have actually closed in 30305 in that price range. And let's see what's been going on there. So the first thing we'll do is break out our price reductions in the non. And while I'm doing that, for those who have maybe joined last week or have heard, I'm going to be doing another kind of hands-on class of how to actually do these calculations. Not going to get into that today, but uh, we'll be doing that. Probably look for something in the first part of November. I'm going to get with Emily and Terry and we'll do some training um, uh, on how to do that if you have an interest in learning that. So, all right, so we said, Emily, the overall market, total days on market for the active inventory was 71, and here we are at 69. So it's tracking about the same, so not much change there, but let's see what happens when we uh, look at the price reductions and the non-price reductions. Okay, so for the homes that didn't have to reduce their price or the condos rather, um, total days on market was about 30 days. So if you've got a listing right now and you're in this price point in 30305 between three and 650 and you've been on the market for more than 30 days, it's probably time to start having a price uh, correction conversation with your sellers. Uh, let's take a look too and kind of see what the average original list price to sell price ratio was for the homes priced correctly. And I, I think sometimes too, and y'all tell me, I think when you have a situation like this, especially when you're looking at condos in the same building, since typically a lot of times they're more or less the same um, floor plans and so forth, it's a little easier sometimes I think to kind of show what's been going on in one market to the next. It might get a little tricky if you're comparing building to building, uh, depending on some nuances there. But 98% of asking price is what sellers realized um, that got the pricing correct. 
And for those that missed the mark, the average of those misses was about 25,287, which is that number that you see right there. That's the average of all the reductions that took place over the last 90 days. Uh, the sale price to original list price ratio was Ninety-one and a half percent. It's a pretty significant difference there. Uh, what's that? Six and a half percent. And the total days on market for those was one hundred and six days. So right along the same lines as the active inventory. So that tells me that what's out there right now, as far as active, that's had a price reduction. They may not be done yet. Um, because 110 days is what they're looking at, and those that successfully closed are a few days um, more than that. So they might have a little ways to go before they actually get an offer. Um, so what I'd like to do now, though, is we're going to take this information, and I'm going to show you real quick um, where you might want to use this kind of stuff to kind of share with a seller and talk about the consequences of overpricing or what they might expect in terms of time on market and things of that nature. And for some of you, you might recognize this, uh, those from the in-town office. This is uh, something that we did several weeks ago when I did it just for your office. Um, I'll get to that question in a moment, Mary. But this, if you kind of take a look, when I was talking about earlier, a summary, providing a summary to a seller, um, I think this is something that you might want to consider doing in addition to a full-blown CMA. Um, and kind of giving just bullet points uh, or what's been going on in the market. We talked about the actives already, and I believe that number was 77. Um, was that correct, Emily? Um, and then the average total days on market was, uh, remind me what those numbers were again. 71, we had 30. Yeah. Okay, and we had about 45% of the market that was overpriced, correct? Yes. Yep. So then, too, if we kind of take a look down here, our average total days on market, you could put in a number there. We can talk about month supply and absorption. So our month supply, if we look back at the trend graphics, was trending more towards a buyer's market, if you recall. And I think that was uh, 7.9 months. So these are just, I think, important things to kind of share with the seller as you're kind of giving them an overview of what's been going on in the market. But the next page here is kind of where I wanted to take us and it's a pricing comparison. So you're kind of showing them, you know, the impacts of pricing something correctly versus not. And so our list price to sell price, our original list price to sell price ratio for non-reduction was 98 and a half. It was uh, 98 and the non, uh, reduction was 91 and a half. Your total days on market was 30 versus, what we say, 106. And so you would plug those numbers in here and show the differentials. And then you see the uh, line below where it says strategic pricing summary. And kind of like you have what I have calling the compelling price, a competitive price, and an improbable price. And that's going to kind of be based on what you pull up in your CMA and where you think it needs to be. Compelling price, obviously, is as soon as it's shown, people are running back to the office to make an offer because they think somebody else is going to come along. A competitive price is probably going to be where you're kind of testing the uh, upper end of the market. And there's a high probability of 45% chance in this case that you might have to reduce the price in order to be compelling to drive an offer. And then the improbable is we all know it's never going to happen and it's either going to expire or withdrawn and cause you lots of aggravation. But the way that I get these anticipated market times, you can pull this directly from the data. So this data was telling us that in 30 days or less, if the price is compelling and doesn't require a price reduction, that's the market time we're gonna expect. Then the competitive price would be anything from 31 days to that 106 days, um, because that was the range for homes that had to do a price reduction and you would put what your price would be there. And then the improbable price is going to be the price that probably your seller wants to put on the market that you know is not realistic. And that's going to be 106 days to no sale at all. So that would be where you could put that information. And then you can kind of just, again, show the breakdown based on what you think your price should be 
at a competitive price and a compelling price and share what those uh, realized price differences would be in a net to the seller. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with, you know, how you can take the information that we pull here through FMLS and train graphics uh, combined and kind of have a conversation with a seller about what's going on in the market. Uh, any questions about that? And uh, Mary, I will get to your question here. Let me get into the chat. How does continuing social unrest affect condos located in the heart of the unrest? Well, I, I think, you know, obviously you're hearing more and more uh, in mainstream or uh, like Inman and Riz Media that there is this um, trend of people maybe uh, preferring um, areas that aren't in the urban core and kind of going out to the suburbs. Uh, next week on our update to the market realities, I've got some information that pertains to that. Although I would say that kind of looking at just what's going on here in Atlanta, um, we're still seeing good um, movement in terms of the number of homes selling, which is why I'm highlighting again the September comparison year over year difference. So it's not like that the it's become a ghost town in these areas. And I would not say that it's just not desirable anymore for people to kind of be in situations, uh, housing situations like this, because the data is telling us something different. Um, I know that there's a lot of that going on, a lot of conversation going on. I just think that that's going to kind of be on an individual basis. And over time, the data will show us whether or not it is indeed true. Um, I hope I answered that. Um, to your satisfaction. So, all right, so we looked at that 300 to 650. Uh, is there interest in kind of taking a look maybe to see what's going in the million and above, maybe single family detached? Because I know that that's a market that we serve a lot. I'm gonna get a, a thumbs up from somebody or a yeah or something. I got a thumbs up from Shay, it's good enough for me. Uh, all right, so we're going to look at single family detached and we're going to look at homes over a million. And do we want to expand it out to just all of 21 versus 30305? Or do we want to look at another area of town? Expand out to 21, okay? All right, so we're going to eliminate our zip code. And we're going to look at 21 in general, and we're going to look at single family detached. And let's see what's going on in that market. And again, y'all jump on, put something in the chat of other things that you want to take a look at, because that's what I'm here to do is just to pull stuff for you and have conversations about kind of what we're seeing. All right, so as a quick snapshot, again, looking in trend graphics, I am seeing that we basically have had, a, there's been no change really in the a number of homes for sale on a year over year basis. Uh, two more properties this year versus last, which is negligible in my opinion. However, uh, we're seeing a tremendous uptick in the number of homes that have closed in the million and above and the number of homes that went under contract uh, September uh, year over year. So again, positive trends uh, following along what's been going on basically all over all of the six core counties uh, in um, just in general. So if we take a look uh, in terms of the month over month, we actually have a little bit of a decrease in the number of homes available for sale. So we had seven more homes last month than this month or in September. And uh, we saw the pendants uh, slide down, slow down a little bit uh, month over month. But again, that was coming off of some amazing activity in July and August. And if you remember, don't look at that and think, oh my God, the market's stopping. Look at this and kind of see what's doing on a year over year basis. Because as you know, seasonally, historically, we always tend to kind of slow down a little bit as we go into October and November and December. And we're just coming off some amazingly big months uh, in the summer that we even don't typically see because of the pent up demand and so forth and so on. So 
I'm not going to be real concerned about seeing a drop of 28% because that's coming off a pretty strong August. But let's take a look and see what's going on in terms of the um, number of new listings that have come on and the impact on the months of supply and so forth and so on. So right now for September, because of that great strong uh, closing month we had, we are down to a 4.8 month supply of inventory for homes priced over a million in area 21. And as you can kind of see, that was a drop from the previous month. We had a low month in July, again, coming off of some really strong activity that led up into June and July. Not any surprise that as you can kind of see the impacts of the pandemic and when the market stopped, I mean, we were doing well in March and then we went up in April, May, and then kind of started coming back down in June as we could kind of get out from underneath the shelter in place orders. So that's what you can kind of say is, that was the impact that COVID had in the upper end. In just the market in general, you'll see this trend continue uh, in April and May and then start to slow down or go, or go back in a other direction beginning in June and especially in July. But if you compare it to where we were last year, we had a 9.4 month supply of inventory based on closed sales and we're at a 4.8. So we have transitioned from a buyer's market a year ago to a seller's market in September for homes over a million. Um, if we look at the pended sale, like what can we expect on the horizon in the future based on the number of homes that went under contract in September, we're kind of eking up more to a balanced market. That six month uh, supply, six to seven months would be a balanced market here. And again, probably more a function of the seasonality and us just kind of approaching the holidays and everything else. And then if we look here, so for every 10 homes that are on the market, we're selling about two a month. And that's what that absorption rate means based on closed sales. It's slowed down a little bit in terms of the pending activity again, too. And you can kind of see what's been going on with the median prices. I got a question from one of your peers uh, last week with regards to what has been going on with pricing in Area 21 um, for homes over a million. You know, can you say, like, are we, um, are our, is our pricing? Uh, back to where it was before the Great Recession. So basically before July of 2007. And we absolutely have gone past that. If you look at the case Shiller and we're well above what pricing was prior to the recession. And it was probably by about 13 or 14 points on the case Shiller scale. And I was looking, that was for, for, for Atlanta as a general, but then if you even look and see what was being sold, uh, at that time versus what we're doing now in terms of the median prices were well above there. In a moment, I'm going to show you kind of another quick place that you can go and just do a quick comparison of median sold price and show different and compare different areas, different zip codes if you want. But this is kind of what it's looking like here. Any comments, any observations? What are y'all's thoughts on, uh, on this since this is an area that I know lots of you work? Or you want to speak for the group, Shay, since they're all going to be shy again? Really, I'm really hoping somebody would speak up. But it, I mean, we're seeing that increase in the average sales price, which is really huge, which shows for the appreciation that's happened just in a year's time. So that's a really good sign. Yep. It is a good sign. And if we if we did this too, let's even kind of do this. Let's Let's do a price limit. Let's just look at the million to 2 million um, so we can kind of tighten that so it won't skew that median uh, average quite so point. much. Let's just kind of see what's going on with that. And that's the thing I love about trend graphics is, you know, in a very short amount of time, you can get a lot of information just by making a few little changes in your data points. So um, as you can kind of see here, uh, Shay, to your point, uh, last year uh, in September, we were at a basically uh, 1.28. This year, we're at a median of about 1.4. You can kind of see it's been consistent about the 1.4 yeah. range. We went from basically the 1.2s to 1.3 to 1.4 now. So that's definitely a sign of um, pricing improving and going up in that area. And you can kind of see where we were all consistently going back to last year. We had one little month where in October we sold looks like maybe some really upper end pie pushing towards 2 million for that particular month, which skewed that. But if you look historically over time, we are definitely on an upward trend in terms of median sale price. So 
very, very positive. And, you know, Todd, um, when you, when you real, go up there to the months of inventory as well, you can see that you're, you're actually, uh -huh. um, we're down a good bit. Like last year we were at six months. Now we're at about four months worth of inventory. That's a real improvement. Yep, it is an improvement. And we definitely have transitioned, like I was saying before, to a, um, you know, what I would say a seller's, a seller's market from a buyer's market in a pretty short period of time. Um, but let's just kind of like take a look and see what's going on in terms of um, the trends and pricing and, you know, how, you know, because I know that a lot of challenges that everybody's facing right now is that sellers are hearing there's no inventory on the market and we got great buyer demand. So a lot of them are thinking, well, let's just price it. Let's, let's just slap a price on it. And, you know, we can pretty much expect to get it whatever we are uh, want to get. So let's take a look. Let's just look at it for the million to two million in terms of what's been going on in the last 60 days, because I think we'll have enough data points for that. Let's see, I did that correctly? Yes. You gotta All right. change that property type, Todd. Thank you. I knew I was missing something. Okay, here we go. So 70 matches. So we've had 70 homes sell and close in area 21 in the last 60 days. So a nice data set to take a look at and see what's going on. Um, and we'll take a look at just the active inventory too. That way, if any of you have um, any uh, listings out there currently on the market in this, we can uh, give you an idea of what to kind of give you an idea of what's going on there. All right. Okay. So for the entire market, the average total days on market right now is two months. So not, not too shabby for a home between a million and two million to be on the market for basically 60 days. But let's take a look and see uh, when we break out the price reductions and the non-price reductions, what happens to the numbers. So, I'm going to do a little math here real quick. So, 40% of the market, we had 28 homes that had to do a price reduction. So, 40% of the market was uh, overpriced or at least had to reduce their price to get an offer. Um, of the homes that didn't have to do a price reduction. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, you know, obviously I'm only looking at um, a particular FMLS number. So there very well could be homes that we're looking at that are not currently showing a price reduction that were on the market before and either did a price reduction or withdrawn or with it expired or that kind of thing. So I'm not suggesting that, you know, any of these up above maybe weren't overpriced at some point in time, but what you're looking at is when they got the price right and they didn't have to do another further reduction, they went under contract and sold in 36 days. So the only way to really kind of pull those out would be to go back and really do some heavy data manipulation and so forth. And I think this is just, you know, it shows that this was what it should have been priced at had they priced it right the first time. So 36 days on market is the average for non-reductions. Sellers listen to their wise Harry Norman agents and priced it correctly. And when they did, they realized about 96% of their asking price. So, but when they don't listen and they think they can just put it on the market, for whatever price they want to, and somebody's going to come along and buy it. 
They are on the market for 94 days. So what, three times more marketing time? Basically we went from 30 to 90. So they're on for uh, two more months, two more months worth of carrying costs, which a lot of times sellers don't factor in. Mortgage payments and payments to keep the house clean and the pool clean and the yard looking nice and everything else that goes along with homes that are priced at this price range. Then when they don't price it correctly, they typically are having to reduce the price by almost $70,000. That's what the data is telling us for the last 60 days. And when they don't price it correctly and they have to do the price reduction and then probably are taking another hit because they're reducing it in a list price or a realized sale price, they're getting about 90% of the asking price. So a 6%, we'll call it a 5.6% difference in what they realize. So pretty significant stuff. Um, let's take a look though, and just kind of see how uh, much in reality the current sellers are who currently have their homes for sale, which may be some of your listings, I don't know. But we have 136 homes that are currently listed. Um, and we know that uh, two of those are selling for every 10, right? Based on what's happened over the last 60 days. So you can kind of do the math on that. Plus we have, that's assuming no other inventory comes on the market, which we all know isn't gonna be the case. So of those 136 homes, if you can remember those numbers, Emily, or we can go back and take a look at them and kind of see, you know, what the comparison is versus what closed versus what's still out there. There's a big reduction right there in and of itself. All right. So right now, that specialty homes um, person isn't doing the market any favors by being on for 482 days. 81.4 days is the total days on market right now for all the active inventory. And then let's just break out the two. As you can see, lots of homes have reduced their price. Do the math. So 136. So about 46% of the market is overpriced. And of our homes that closed successfully, only 40% were overpriced. So we've got um, more inventory on the market that probably needs to do a price reduction than it already has. Um, but again, this is gonna probably skew the non-price reductions because whoever this specialty homes is here, that's a resale, they're awfully stubborn being on the market for 482 days right now. But so for the non-price reductions, the average is 63.81. And for those that have had to do the price reduction and they're still trying to get an offer, they've been on for 102 days on average. So again, a pretty, a pretty substantial difference. So again, the way I would kind of take that to a seller who I was getting ready to go on a listing appointment with in addition to doing your CMA that would be kind of maybe on a tighter obviously price point in a tighter radius of where the home was located I would still though show because if somebody's going to be looking for a home in Buckhead a million to two million they're going to look pretty much around all around in Buckhead right so the total number of active is instead of 75 that would be 136 the average total days on market would be what do we say 80 some odd days I can't remember um, but there's been 81. about a 81 days. Uh, the number of price reductions I put there in the percentage of the price reductions is 46. 
And then when you come down and you see what the price, you know, the percent per price reductions for the successfully closed homes is at 40%, you know, kind of shows you that, you know, you got a lot of inventory out there that's still probably overpriced. I would suggest also doing the same thing with the pendings, with withdrawals and expires, because the withdrawals and expires are basically the rejects of the market, right? For whatever reason, they had to either be pulled off the market or they expired because for some reason they didn't sell. So that's important information. You don't want to become a reject. Nobody likes to be rejected. And then you have your sold information here, what's been going on, and you can kind of do uh, your comparisons and then show your month's supply at a seller's market now of the uh, 4.8 um, for whatever it was. So, and then carrying that on forward, you can do your comparison, your 96% of asking price versus if they reduce it at 90%, that difference there, the total days on market, and then carry the um, down. So again, your compelling price, your days on market would be zero to 62 days a competitive price 63 to 100 and whatever, and then the improbable price is 100 and something and beyond. Is that kind of making sense, the rationale and the, lot, the thought process behind kind of framing it like that versus just giving a ton of data to somebody? It's like I say, you, you know, when you, when you go to the, you know, to the doctor and you're getting your checkup, you know, the, the doctor doesn't take your, your blood pressure and then pull out the medical journal and show you why your blood pressure is good or not good. They just tell you it's within a range. Same with taking your, uh, listening to your heart and your lungs and everything else. They don't go to each time. I don't, I would argue you don't do the same thing either when you go and you're talking with somebody unless they really want to dig into the weeds and, and get to the nitty gritty of it. So what else do we want to take a look at? Holly, Debbie, Maggie, Raquel, I can see you. I can't see your faces, but I can see your names. John, anything? Anything you guys are interested in hearing more some, about? Put I it do. In the chat. I have some. Yeah. Go. All right, Cherry. Okay, good. I can't type that quick. Can we do uh, 131 condominiums just really quickly? Because I'm trying to do something today and I need your help. All right, 131. Okay. Let's go to trend graphics first. You want townhomes or just condos? Best condos under 500. Okay. All right, so we're going to do condos. Under 500. All right, so condominiums in area 131 under 500. These are the trends that's going on right now. You've got uh, an undersupply of inventory month over month for the last for this year versus last year of about 15%. Um, your your activity in terms of property selling year over year is up 30%. Um, pendings are up 15%. Month over month, your inventory is slightly down at 4.1%, but your activity is still strong again. Um, solds are up 10%, pendings are up 2%, basically one more than the previous month. So I would say people have got an appetite for condos in area 131, uh, priced under 500. Um, right now, your months of inventory based on closed sales, 2.3, definitely a seller's market. Uh, even stronger for pended based on the strong pending activity for the last 30 days. You're down to 1.9 months and you're averaging, you're absorbing about 44% of the market. So for every 10 listings, you're selling four um, of, on, you know, for what's been going on. And if you kind of look at it, things are a little slower. Uh, the first 10 days or 11 days of October compared to last year. 
You can see that there, Sherry, in the second uh, table down. Um, your, your available inventory is down, which isn't surprising, but the number that have sold closed is slightly down. But again, I, don't, I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Um, let the month develop because, you know, sometimes depending on how the weeks fall, dictates when those um, closings can occur. And then for the month over month, the first 11 days of September to compare to October, you can kind of see what's going on there as well. Things are slowing down a little bit. Uh, and then you have your um, trend line of um, medium price, uh, certainly above where it was last year. Um, it was kind of around the 160, low 170, even dropped to 150 in October. And you're consistently staying in the 175, the high 170 range. So price appreciation for sure there. What else do we want to look at? You have some requests in the chat box, Todd, but I don't know if you can see it. Okay, fantastic. Let me take a look. So basically- Avery, what um, about your group? What do they want to hear? Holly and Maggie are asking for similar things. They're interested kind of in the morning side area, um, area 23. Okay. Maggie's asked- Area 23. Uh-huh. Maggie's asked- I don't know why I can't see the chat right now. Maggie's why can't I see my chat? Right to 600 and then Holly's asked 1 million plus. Okay, so let's do the 400 to 600 first, and we're going to go to area 23, you said? That's right. Okay. Area 23. And we're doing single family or we're doing condo? We are doing single family for both. Single family, 400 to 600 for both, okay? So let's look 400 to 600. All right, so I got single family, 400 to 600 in area 23. There's my chat, perfect. Couldn't see my chat there for a while. Okay, so not a whole lot of, um, inventory or data points to take a look at, but um, it, is, it is what it is. We'll take a quick look at it. Uh, we currently have um, an undersupply year over year of about 27%. We had 33 listings last year. We've got 24 homes that uh, were for sale in September this year. Um, for the month, uh, you can kind of see below uh, in the first 11 days last year, there was 39 homes for sale. There's only 26, so a third under supply or compared to last year. Um, closings were kind of off uh, for this area on a year-over-year -year basis of about 30%, and, um, but pendings are up. So kind of had a slow month year-over-year, year, but um, and then a slow month, month-over-month month in August to September. You can kind of see what was going on there as well. So the market slowed down a little bit. However, it's still very much a seller's market. If you look here at your month supply, that place got down to less than a month supply. I remember looking at this with in town a couple months ago and when I was commenting about how this area in particular has just gone crazy, even in the million and above. But we're at a 3.4 month supply. Last year we had a 3.3. This has always been a seller's market. Uh, except for, you know, these little bumps here in uh, October and January of this year, even through uh, the first shelter in place, always been a seller's market in this price point. So uh, two month, 2.4, it's going to go down probably next month based on the pendings, assuming they close. We're absorbing about every, uh, for every 10 houses, three homes on a monthly basis. And since we have such a limited supply of inventory to begin with, um, that's pretty good. The absorption weight went up about 10 percentage points, a little over that for the pended. So we're up at about uh, four homes for every 10 that go on the market. 
And then your um, median price dropped a little bit in September, probably sold more on that lower end of 400 versus the upper end of six. But as you can kind of see where we were leading up to that month, we were trending in that 525-ish range. And a year ago, we were in that 512 at the very, very upper end. So again, more evidence of uh, good price appreciation for those areas. And um, I expect the same to continue with the absorption and the months of inventory. So function of supply and demand. I'm and then we wanted to look in the same area. Go ahead. Be interested in um, how much, because I know that, they're, that they've had a lot of multiple offer situations, how much over the asking mm -hmm. price ended up selling for on average all right let's go take a look at it uh let's see go away little toolbar all right so we're gonna look at now Let's see what we can just see in the last, I know it's not gonna be much because it's not been much selling. Um, we're gonna look at 23. We're looking at four to six. That was our price range, correct? And it was detached. Okay, so we've got 19 homes. Let's take a look and see what's going on with them. What I'll do too is I'll do a different column so we can see if there's any that actually sold for more than the close price. So the first column here is gonna be the price reductions. The next column is gonna be if anything sold above the original asking price to answer your question. Um, and it looks like Maybe we've got a couple. Let's go ahead and sort this first by the price reductions. Okay. Well, before I do that, let's go back and let's just figure out what our total days on market. Y'all seeing a quick trend right there of the non-reductions and the price reductions? It jumps out at you right here. Look at that. Look at all those single digits for the homes that didn't have to do a price reduction versus the ones that did, all of that down there. That's pretty glaring. But uh, let's see, the average though, just for the market in general is 49, basically 50 days. And then we'll separate out the two. And then what I'll do is I will sort this by the actual increases. So in this case, the negative uh, Holly is a positive because of the way I've done the math. So as you can see, this property listed for 385, sold for 415. This one listed for 525, closed for 535. So of your um, homes here, of the nine that are there, three actually sold for above asking price. So you could say that there was definitely probably multiple offer situations there. It's hard to say for the ones that sold at asking price. And then you got a couple that sold politely slightly below what they were asking for, but, but by not a whole lot. Um, and then we can kind of see that <laughs> the average total days on market's less than a week if they price it correctly in this area, in this price range. And then this will probably be, if not above asking price, it will be pretty darn close. Let's just see what the 
average list to sale is. Yep, it's going to be higher. And that's something, you know, that's a conversation worth having with sellers too, because, you know, just because you're telling them that we, you know, if you really want to sell it quickly and we're compelling, it, it can actually drive multiple offer and a higher, uh, higher realized price than what they listed for. And this is a great example and illustration of when that could happen. It actually happened right next door to my, my neighbor's house and she got multiple offers and sold above, uh, asking price by about $10,000. And that was a upper 500 price point. So it does happen. So sellers don't need to think just because we're being aggressive with our pricing means that we're underselling it because the market's going to dictate. Otherwise the market's always right. You know, whatever the market does, it's always kind of what's been going on, what, what's going on. Um, as far as what's going on with the homes that didn't get priced correctly, they're on the market for about three months. And the average original list to sale price ratio is so I really like this, Holly. I'm glad you asked for this because it does tell that story. Look at that. It's so it's like a almost a 14% difference. Um, by just getting overly aggressive and pricing yourself out of the market. And when they don't get it right, they're making a reduction of about $67,000. So, um, and this kind of, again, tells a cool story. Um, and uh, assuming you're like a numbers nerd like me, but look, we went from our average sale price for homes priced correctly, 523900 for those that really got aggressively and overpriced the market, you know, and started here, they actually ended at 507. I mean, that tells to me again, a compelling story that I want to share with somebody who's, and here's the real, uh, the reality of this too, y'all is nobody's doing this. Nobody's really having these conversations with sellers like that. What are they doing? They're basically going regurgitating a CMA that they can either get from FMLS or not taking anything away from toolkit. Cause I think it's a great tool. Don't shoot me, Emily, but it's easy right? It's like cheating. You go in, you type a couple of uh, homes and it spits out a comp. You're not having to do any of the real digging in the, in the real work. You do something like this. And then here's the thing. If you know, they're going to be maybe interviewing another agent, just have them ask the question. Well, ask that agent, how many homes had a price reduction and what the days on market was compared to those that didn't, they're not going to know, you know? So that's where, again, you really start showing your value and differentiating yourself in the market. So thank you for this example, Holly. Is this kind of what you were looking for or, or thought might be going on? Todd, I think that one was the one that Maggie was asking for. Oh, Holly. Maggie. Yeah. Holly okay, Maggie. Well, Maggie. Okay, well, I was, I was giving Holly all the credit and it was Maggie. Sorry, Maggie. Oh, no worries. No, it, 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 this is really enlightening because I thought that there would be more ones that were reasonably priced because of how aggressive I'm hearing it is. Um, but this is actually giving me hope in terms of my buyers finding something. Um, yeah, they just and, need to be really careful about how we price the offer. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And again, yeah. that's a great point too, Maggie. You can use this same information when you're working with buyers and kind of show them a realistic picture of what's going on in the market. And in some cases, you know, if they've gotten into multiple offer situations before, I'm not encouraging anybody to overpay for something, but think about it like this too. When you're talking about, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly. I'm going to get with David Allstead and see kind of like what the average, what our average number of, tr of cash transactions is currently running as a company right now. Cause I think it'll kind of be reflective of the market, but in most cases, people are getting a mortgage, right? So that the, the cost of owning the home is going to be dictated by what their monthly mortgage payment is not necessarily by what the list price of the home is. The only time that that'll become an impact of the cost of the home is when somebody's paying cash. Otherwise, you're getting a mortgage and it's the cost of what your mor monthly mortgage payment is and all your other fixed costs like, you know, utilities and things of that nature. So have that conversation, too, and get them away from what the list price of the house is or the fact that they might be overpaying and what their monthly mortgage payment is going to be. And at the end of the day, most of you are probably writing in to where it has to appraise so they have that protection, too. Um, what was the other data set, Emily, that Holly wanted to take a look at? It was the same area, but it was a million plus. 
A million plus. Okay, so let's yeah. go look and see what a million plus buys you or gets you versus the four to six. And I was going to say, just with Toolkit CMA, I always um, suggest that our agents go into FMLS first and pull their comps and then put those specific comps into Toolkit. So it's not going to just pull a, arbitrarily, yeah, randomly exactly. select. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, maybe to tack on to the next offering that you have where you actually show everyone how you go into FMLS and pull these numbers and then extract it into Excel. Um, they can actually upload that Word document as a personal page into Toolkit. So we could probably do that. Absolutely. Like awesome. Love it. All right. Um, Holly, do you want to put a price limit on this, like a range, or you just want to look at a million and above? Um, let's go up to maybe a million to two million. Okay. And we're staying in 23 detached. Um, all right, we got 29 results. I'll do the same thing too to see if we have anybody who's paid more than. I think in today's market, that would be a really good item to add to that customized Word document you have, Todd. Yeah, I agree. And I'll give um, Maggie all the credit for it and Holly too, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Team effort. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick look at this. Uh, real fast, the average total days on market, just for the whole market, 35 days. Not long at all. I mean, that's crazy to think that a house over a million dollars is selling in a month. Um, and that's regardless if they get it priced right correctly or not. But let's go ahead and break out our... Um, ones that got it right and the ones that didn't. All right, not a whole lot of um, overpriced properties. I mean, there's some, but for the most part, okay, so, let me do this too. Let me just sort this so we can see the ones that. All right, so we had one, two, three, four homes actually sell for above asking price in the last 60 days. And uh, we'll take a look at that more in a moment, but let's just do our days on market calculations. 18 days for homes priced correctly. So about, you know, two and a half weeks. And ninety nine percent of asking price. It's a pretty darn good when you're getting just one one percent shy um so you had and here's the thing too you know a lot of times and this is something that's helpful to look at and we'll dig into more of this like you know when i do the actual looking at the data in here but you'll notice this e column um here i've got that kind of shows what kind of if it was under construction or a resale a lot of times when you see uh, the prices being above the original list price it's because it's been a new construction and, you know, obviously they've added, they've done something like added, you know, some finished a basement or something like that. So that's not too uncommon sometimes in new construction to see the actual price be up. But in this case, all of the homes that sold in this area were resale. So obviously not a whole lot of new construction opportunities, probably because there's not much dirt left around. We got one that sold down here that's a new construction. 
um, at line 29, but everything has been resale in here. And let's see. For the homes that weren't priced correctly, 73 days on the market. So a um, little over two months. Come on. The average of the price reduction is 75,000. And I think, you know, when you put it into these terms and like these numbers, to, sell, to tell somebody, you know what, if we don't get it right, if we don't price it correctly, not only on the market longer, but you're probably going to have to be looking at a, an average, the average reduction is right now about $75,000. I mean, that's still a good chunk of change for somebody selling a house that's, you know, between a million and two million. 91.6% uh, of asking price is what they're realizing. And again, I, I just love this, how this tells the story for you. Look at the average selling price for the homes priced correctly at 1.356 and the ones that didn't at 1.285. So again, you're not gonna be underselling the house if you just price it correctly and compellingly the right time around. And in this case, you know, we had four out of 20. So what's, what's, what's the math on that? Like 20% or something like that of the homes sold? Um, yeah, 20% of the homes sold, sold for above asking price. That's a pretty cool number to say, right? You know, we've got a 20% chance of selling above what you're asking for if we just price it right to begin with and not get all crazy wackadoodle in terms of overpricing it. So um, what y'all think? Helpful? Thanks, Todd. That was really helpful. Would you actually mind sending the spreadsheet to me? Is that possible? This is Holly. Um, I can, Holly, but it's going to cost you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it to you. Can I have my spreadsheet too? This is Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm actually recording this too. So you can, I'll send the recording out to, all, to everybody. Can you jot down everybody's names again for me, Emily? So I can email out this to everybody, please. Yes. All right. So we got about 15 more minutes. I'm happy to run through one more um, area to take a look at if anybody has a request. Either put it in the chat or just take yourself off mute and shout it out. Can you show us the showing report and graph? Oh, that was a while ago. Anybody else have an area they want to take a look at real fast? Going once, twice. All right, well, if nobody else wants to take a look at anything else, then we will um, go ahead and We'll let you go for the afternoon. If you guys have any questions or anything, yeah. Before you do that, can you stop your screen share so I can take a screenshot of everybody that's on? I can, I can. Actually, what I'm gonna do too, real quick, um, let me get to it. I forgot, I, I wanted to share with them. Um, so this is another place and it's probably gonna do something crazy, but another little tool that some of you may or may not know of um, and it's going to make me go through this whole rigmarole again, but I want to show it to you because it's kind of a neat tool. Again, I'm all about speed and making it easy. So let's let FMLS do its thing. So if you look here under public records and market stats, I don't know if y'all have poked around in this at all, but again, I think it's a pretty neat thing to use just because it's fast and easy and you can get all sorts of data. And let's just, um, let's do a comparison just because we looked. Holly or Maggie, give me a zip code in 23 for those million and up that we were looking at. Uh, 30306. 30306. Okay, and then we're gonna look at what 30306 is doing, oops, hold on. 30306. Okay. Oh, quit. 
30305, come on. Okay, so we're gonna look at residential detached and we're gonna look at the 775 or more. So like if you had, if you were working with somebody and they said, well, tell me a little bit about the difference between what's been going on in 30306 versus 30305, this is a great place where you can come and do a quick, quick side-by-side -side comparison. So the first thing is always gonna to default to the median sale price. And we were talking about median sale prices earlier. And as you can see, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride of median sale prices. And again, that's a function of, you know, selling more of the upper end because we didn't do a limit on this. We just did 775 or more. If we were to scale this down and do it a narrower range, this wouldn't be so skewed. Uh, and you have the, actually the flexibility to go in and customize these price points. But I'm just going to kind of show you what you can quickly get information here using this, uh, this tool. So Right now that we could kind of look and see and say, well, it looks like the median sale price for 30305 is 1.285. And uh, for 30306, it's 1.030. So probably maybe doesn't come as a surprise. Typically, maybe that's a little bit, you know, things run a little bit higher in 21 versus 23. But what I really like and what I think is cool is a couple things along the bottom here. Now I get it that, you know, in a lot of cases for million and above that, you know, showing time may not be the tool that people use to schedule appointments with, but, you know, more and more agents are going to it. And what you can kind of see down here and probably more applicable certainly would be applicable to the people in the condo that we looked at from four to 600, the very first go around. But if I click on this and go shows to pending, so this is going to show me how many showings does it take till I get a pending contract Right now it's showing me the median, but I really kind of want to take a look at the average. So in uh, the month of September for homes 775 and above, single family detached, it was on average, it took about three showings to get to uh, an offer and about 12.7 showings uh, in 30306 to get to a pending contract. Now, if I wanted to see how many showings on average those homes had, I just clicked this here and it's gonna show me that information. So again, uh, 30305 in September, there was an average of 2.8 showings a month. And for uh, 30306, it was 4.9. But I just love how I can kind of slide along this scale and see what the different price points were. Plus I can kind of look at this and pick up a general trend. Are we trending up? Are we trending down? What's been going on? And isn't it interesting that for the most part, these lines or these graphs are pretty much following each other in terms of the number of showings. But in addition to that, like if I wanted to see what the average price was per square foot, I can look at it and it'll quickly show it to me here. And you can kind of see what the average price per square foot is uh, from this area to the next. Or any of these other things like month supply, if I wanted to see what the total month supply was, I can grab it quickly here. And I can see that the average month supply in September for 30306 in this demographic or these data sets was 3.1. And in 30305, uh, 7.1. So probably more of a seller's market in September for 30306 and more of a balanced market in 30305. So again, I think it's just a great little thing to kind of take a look at, especially if you're kind of trying to get an idea of like how one area is comparing to the other. I can go up here and I can do this by county. Uh, I can do it by city. Um, so forth. I wouldn't mess with subdivision. Uh, and then area is just defaulting to the greater Atlanta area. So unfortunately, you can't do a 21 to a 23. You have to do it by zip code. But again, just a cool thing that I thought, you know, uh, a quick little resource for you to use as well, if um, you didn't know about it.